now we are coming to one very important topic of this lesson importance of water now we know how important water is in our day-to-day -day life right now water is a basic need can we live without water we can't so water is one main factor to do our which is needed to do our day-to-day uh, -day activities right so under this chapter we are going to learn the importance of water why we need water okay so importance of water for human activities in our day-to-day -day activities we use water in different different instances what are they look at these pictures children what is this child doing drinking water can we live without drinking water we'll be able to live for a few hours or maybe even like three four days but after that we will definitely die without water okay and we will write these things now children to drink we need water to drink what else look at this one now this child is uh, watering this plant for agriculture right for agricultural purposes we need water right and here uh, to wash clothes we will write them for agriculture for agriculture to wash clothes to wash clothes what is this child doing bathing right to bathe and ships and boats travel on earth so what happens for transportation for transportation for transportation right so here this is a hydropower plant so in sri lanka one main method of generating electricity is using this hydropower right so to produce or generate electricity to generate electricity to generate electricity okay so it's very clear in our day-to-day -day activities we use water in so many ways okay so we are going to see some other ways as well uses of water okay we are going to discuss about the same thing and some more things here for industries including agriculture here we already discussed about agriculture here to water plants to water these crops we need water so plants cannot live without water just like us okay so for industries including agriculture what are the other industries yes fisheries industry water industry we need to use water in these industries okay so we will use in agriculture what are the other industries we will write fisheries industries fisheries industry and pottery industry these are the examples okay so number two for sanitary purposes to wash our bodies to bathe to wash our clothes to become clean we need to use water for sanitary purposes right to bathe to wash clothes to wash clothes okay for household activities what are the household activities we need to use water to cook right to wash our houses to wash the floors to clean the houses we have to use water for household activities to cook right to clean dishes to clean dishes etc okay for transportation i already explained you using this picture here we can see a shape and boats so they also need the help of water right and for leisure what are the leisure activities that we uh, do using water swimming diving and some people go fishing all these things are coming under leisure activities right for swimming okay fishing these are the examples 
for water related sports again swimming diving rowing water polo these are the sports activities uh, that we do use in water right so swimming rowing etc diving and to generate electricity so i explained to you that in sri lanka the main method of generating electricity is using hydropower understand children so i hope it's very clear when we consider water there are so many uses of water okay so we learn some examples there are many other uses as well okay children now we are going to look into a different topics same type of topic but it's a little different we will see right children now we learn what are the uses of water and now we are going to learn the importance of water for the existence of life what is the meaning of existence of life life here life means organisms okay so here we are going to learn the importance of water for the existence of organisms so under organisms we are going to learn about the importance of water for plants and animals both okay look at this chart the ways how water is important and here we have number of importances here we will start from one place to transport nutrients throughout the body okay water is very important to transport nutrients throughout the body now you know that when we eat food that food digest and becomes nutrients like glucose amino acids okay so these nutrients should be taken from one place to another place because all the cells need these nutrients okay children so how does this happen this is done by blood so when we eat food they break down in our body and they are absorbed to the blood circulatory system okay so through blood these nutrients are taken throughout the body so when it comes to blood the main substance present in blood is water understand therefore to transport nutrients throughout the body water is very important that is number 1 okay number 2 for plants to absorb minerals now do you remember in the first lesson under photosynthesis we learned that how root hair absorb the soil water children understand so along with soil water minerals also enter the plant okay therefore for plants to absorb minerals also water is very important okay and for the rigidity of plants there are some small plants like herbs they don't have a very strong stem or they don't have a woody stem so how do they stand erect how do they stand straight children with the help of water we are going to learn about this as well right for photosynthesis now this is very clear so you all know that there are four factors affecting photosynthesis or production of food in plants so water is one of those factors okay photosynthesis and number 5 for cooling the body so what happens when the environmental temperature increases you all have experienced that we start sweating right so the excess amount of water present in our body comes out as this sweat so then what happens when this sweat uh, they comes to the surface of our skin they evaporate and we feel cool okay so sweating is very important for the cooling of the body so what comes out as sweat children basically water comes out as sweat understand therefore for cooling the body also water is important and number 6 as a medium of living habitat now do you remember we learned that there are plants who live in aquatic habitats and also animals who live in aquatic habitats so they are living medium is water so if water is not there these plants and animals will die okay therefore as a medium of living or as a habitat water is again important 
and the next one to digest food now when we eat food I already explained you that there are a lot of nutrients present in this food but the thing is these nutrients cannot be right away absorbed by your body so first of all these big food particles should be broken down into small pieces so that is done by special chemical substances called enzymes okay children so your digestive system has special cells that can produce or that can secrete these enzymes remember children these enzymes can function only in a liquid medium therefore as a medium of digestion of food water is again very important so it means food should be mixed with uh, water in order to digest really well understand so the next one as an excretory medium of animals we are going to learn this again so excretory medium means now what is the excretion excretion means removal of waste substances from your body very briefly okay so basically excretion is done by uh, by producing urine okay so as an excretory medium of animals again water is very important understand children so we will discuss about these points in detail now right to transport nutrients throughout the body so I already explained to you that nutrients are transported by blood okay so when we eat food these food particles they break down in our digestive system how do they break down children with the help of chemical substances called enzymes understand so after breaking down of these large food particles into small pieces they become nutrients they break down into nutrients or simple forms now these nutrients should be transported taken from where the digestive system present to the other places how does this happen children that is done by blood so when these uh, large food particles they break down into uh, small pieces and then finally they become these simple nutrients and our blood absorbs all these nutrients understand so when we discuss about this blood blood has two main parts what are the number one plasma plasma is the liquid part of blood okay and the other part is blood cells blood cells you must have heard of red blood cells white blood cells and platelets they are coming under the solid part of blood okay so the liquid part is known as plasma so when we consider this plasma 90% of plasma contains water isn't it interesting children so it means main part of blood is made out of water understand therefore if the amount of water present in your body reduces it will affect the amount of blood as well because water is a main constituent present in this blood so water is very important to transport nutrients throughout the body understand children i hope so right for plants to absorb minerals do you remember under the first lesson under photosynthesis part we discussed that plant roots absorb these uh, minerals present in soil i hope you remember so what happens children minerals are very important for the growth of plants but basically minerals present as solids okay but when it comes to these plant roots they cannot absorb these minerals in solid state therefore what happens let's say now this is soil so in between soil particles soil water present okay minerals also present in soil but minerals present in solid state but when they mix with soil water they become liquids okay do you remember i explained you water is a very good solvent so it can dissolve minerals in it very well therefore when these minerals dissolve in soil water that 
solution can be absorbed by plant roots very easily. What are these tiny parts of plant roots? They are known as root hair. Root hair. Understand? Therefore, remember in soil, a lot of minerals are there, but they cannot be absorbed by plant roots right away when they present in solid form. Therefore, what happens? These minerals dissolve in soil water so that mixture can be absorbed by root hair very easily. Okay, so for plants to absorb minerals, water is very important. Understand, children? Right. Now look at this one. For the rigidity of plants, look at this plant. Now this is a herb. This is a small plant. You have seen in small plants, they don't have a woody stem, right? They have a green color, very tender stem. So if they have a tender stem, how do they stay erect? How do they stand straight children without having a woody stem, without having a strong stem? That is because of the presence of water inside the plant body. So water gives this rigidity. So you must have seen during very uh, hot seasons, under extreme hot weather, what happens? This plant body gets wilted, right? It becomes lifeless. Why does that happen? That is because the water present in the plant evaporates during extremely hot weather. Therefore, it can't stay rigid. It can't stay straight. Okay, so it's very clear that water is very important for these small plants in order to stay erect, stand straight. Understand? That is why it says another importance of water is for the rigidity of plants. Remember, for the rigidity of most of the small plants. Understand? Right. Okay, the next one. For photosynthesis. Now, you all remember there are four factors affecting photosynthesis. What are those four factors, children? Yes, sunlight, carbon dioxide gas present in the atmosphere, right? And the green color substance. What is the name of that? Yes, that is chlorophylls. Chlorophylls or the green color pigment present in plant leaves. And the last one is water. Where can they absorb water? From the soil. Okay, so water is the next factor. So water present in between these soil particles are absorbed by root hair. Okay, so after absorption of this water that is transported to plant leaves. So leaves are the place where photosynthesis takes place. Understand children? Therefore, without water, photosynthesis doesn't take place. It cannot take place. The presence of all four factors is essential for the process of photosynthesis. Understand children? Therefore, water is very important for production of protein plants or photosynthesis. Understand? Right. As a medium of living, no habitat. Look at this picture, how beautiful this is. You can see some sea plants are there, sea creatures, sea animals are there. So where do they live? Their medium is water. So can they breathe without water? Now you all know that. Well, let's take fish. How do they breathe children? Using gills. Now we breathe the atmospheric air. But these fish, they can't breathe atmospheric air. Okay, so what happens? Uh, they have to use their gills and they breathe. They take the oxygen dissolved in water. Okay, so without water, they cannot breathe. They will die. Understand children? So as a medium of living, where do they live? In aquatic habitat. Understand, therefore, as a medium of living, water is very important. Understand? Right. As an excretory medium of animals. What is the meaning of excretion? Have you ever heard of this term? Excretion. Excretion. What is excretion? 
Now listen carefully. Now our body is made up of number of cells. There are so many activities taking place in the cells. So during these activities, some unnecessary products are formed in the cells. Okay, these are known as waste materials. Waste materials. So if it's a waste material, you all know that we have to remove these waste materials from our body. What will happen if we don't remove these waste materials or these unwanted materials from our body? When these present in our body, those substances will become toxic, poisonous. Understand? Therefore, our body has to get rid of these unnecessary things, excretory materials. So these type of substances with the unnecessary substances are known as excretory materials and removing these excretory materials from our body is known as excretion. Understand? So excretion means removal of, removal of waste material. We'll write harmful waste material, removal of harmful waste material waste material produced in body produced in our body okay children so this excretion can be done in three main ways children okay so the main way of doing excretion is by urine, by urine, okay. So urine is produced in kidneys and urine is sent out using the bladder, okay. So urine is the main excretory material, okay. And when you consider urine, 90% of urine contains water understand so that is why you must have realized on the days that you don't drink enough water your urine is very dark in color okay so that is a sign that your body doesn't have enough water okay so urine contains 90 percent of water understand so what are the other materials of excretion what are the other waste materials produced now this one urine okay now the other form is by producing sweat okay children sweat now sweat also contains a lot of water in it i already explained you under cooling down of body right sweat also contains a lot of water in it so in urine the main substance present is water and even in sweat the main substance present is water what is the third method of removal of the substance? By exhaled air. You all know that when we breathe, when we inhale and exhale, we inhale oxygen and we exhale carbon dioxide. Okay, so using exhaled air. So the main substance present in exhaled air is carbon dioxide gas. I will write the formula carbon dioxide gas but remember apart from carbon dioxide gas exhaled air contains water vapor as well water vapor understand so it's very clear when it comes to excretion there are three different types of substances produced during excretion that is urine sweat and exhaled air by all these three types what happens harmful substances are removed from your body so when it comes to urine and sweat the main substance present is water and even in exhaled air some amount of water vapor present that is how water is very important as an excretory medium of animals understand right now we are going to learn this topic, water, a limited resource. Now we all know that how important water is in our day-to-day -day activities. We need a lot of water, right? So do we have enough water to do all the day-to-day -day activities? 
we will see water covers more than 70% of the earth's surface what is this 70% so let's take if this is the earth more than 70% of the earth is covered by water let's think now something like this okay so it means more than 70% of earth is covered by water. If I mark this, this is about 70%. Right? Let's say this is 30%. What is this? Water. So we can consider this hydrosphere. The amount of water present in earth can be considered as hydrosphere. Right? Hydrosphere. We are going to learn about this hydrosphere later as well. Hydrosphere. 30% is land or the solid part. We can, solid part or we can consider it as lithosphere. Lithosphere. So more than 70% is covered with water. Still it says water is a limited resource. How come children? Is it even true? I will show you whether it's true or not. Now I am going to take this 70% of water or this entire hydrosphere into one circle. Okay. This entire hydrosphere I am going to represent it using a pie chart or a circle. So now this is the entire amount of water present on earth. So what is this blue one? 97.41. Right? 97.41. This is a percentage. We have another percentage. 2.58%. 0 0.01%. What are these values, children? Remember, 97.41%. This amount of water, all this water present in seas and oceans, right? Water present in, water present in seas and oceans, seas and oceans, which means this is marine water, marine water. Can we use marine water in our day-to-day -day activities? We cannot. We can use it to produce salt. But other than other activities, other than producing salt, what are the other activities like bathing, drinking? Can we use this marine water, children? We cannot. See, 97.41% marine water that we cannot use to our day-to-day -day activities. Understand? Now, what is the next one? 2.58%. This is the water present as solids, right? Water present in solid state. Solid state. Examples. Ice, snow, glaciers. Okay? Now, can we use this 2.5? 8% to do our day-to-day -day activities. We cannot understand. So it's very clear even though the entire earth is covered more than 70% of water, we can't use 97.41% of them or we can't use this 2.58% as well. Understand? So what can we use then? Look at this tiny bit. Can you see the red color part? Only 0.01%. Only that much we can consume. So water that can be consumed. Water that can consume. So how little, right? It's very clear. Only a very little amount of water we can consume. So, you know that most of the time, even without us knowing, we waste a lot of water, children. Okay, so we learned that 
water is one essential factor it is a basic need for us we can't live without water but still when we consider the entire amount of water present on earth only a very little amount we can use we can consume in our day-to-day -day activities right even this 0.01 percent is for the entire earth okay so it's very clear even though more than 70 percent of earth's surface is covered with water still water is considered as a limited resource so it is our responsibility to protect this water not to waste water to conserve water understand children now this assignment is given in the textbook we will do this identify the occasions where water is wasted in your school and at your home find out the ways to minimize the wastage of water and fill in the following table now look at this i am sure even without my help you all can do this now right occasions of water waste ways to minimize the wastage of water now what are the occasions of water waste right now think about yourselves how many of you keep the tap open while you're brushing teeth or while bathing how many of you leave the tap open leave the tap running while you're applying soap I am sure there are many children who do this. Not only children, even some adults do this. We don't think that uh, we have to waste water and we do that. It's not like that. But even without us knowing, we just do these type of things. Okay. So, and we wash dishes sometimes. We sometimes, even though we need only a little bit of water to uh, wash our teacup, we open the tap fully. That's also not good. Okay. There are so many ways that we waste water. It's very simple to conserve water, children. It's very simple to minimize the wastage of water. You just have to be a little mindful about it. Okay. You have to always think that when you go into the washroom, okay, I'm going to use water. I should conserve water. Now, we all know that water is a limited resource. Even though we think we have enough water, but water is a limited resource. That is why we have to minimize the wastage of water. Understand? So, shall we write this down? Shall we fill this table? You all can start with me and you can write your own ideas as well. Occasions of water waste. Okay. So, I will write the first one. Keeping the tap running. Keeping the tap running while brushing teeth. While brushing teeth. Washing dishes, etc. Washing dishes, etc. Even bathing, washing clothes, maybe. Okay? So, how to minimize the wastage of water in this instance? You have to be mindful. You have to turn off the tap when you don't use it. Right? So, turn off the tap. Turn off the tap. When not necessary. Understand? Keeping the tap running while brushing teeth, washing dishes, while bathing. And how to minimize that? Turn off the tap when not necessary. What is the next one? I'm going to write overwatering plants. Some of us do this as well. We love gardening and we overwater the plants. It's not necessary. Right. Overwatering plants. So what do you have to write here? Do not water plants unnecessarily. Unnecessarily. 
unnecessarily. Now, uh, some of us use washing machines. Now, when we use washing machines, we have to wait till the washing machine fills with water in order to run it. So, otherwise what will happen? Only if the half of the machine is uh, full and if we run the machine, what will happen? Still, it will consume the same amount of water and it is a waste of water. Okay, we will write that as well. Running washing machines that is not completely full. Right. So the next one, ways to minimize, make sure the washing machine 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 is full before run it before turn it on understand now I don't have enough space to write other points but you can continue writing okay children so I hope now it's very clear, water is a very important resource that you cannot live without. Understand, so it is our duty to protect water, to save water. Understand children, so we should not waste water, we have to minimize the wastage of water and you can even educate the others. If your family members, if you see that they waste water, you can educate them. You can tell them that water is a limited resource. You should not waste them. Understand children? Right. Now we have come to the last topic of this lesson. Water pollution. What is the meaning of water pollution children? Look at this picture. What can you see? This is a water body but it is very dirty. Right? Does it look beautiful? It's very dirty. It's not a very good sight. Right? What actually has happened? Most of the time you can see these type of situations because of some human activities. Some humans, they don't think about the environment. They release different, different substances to the environment. They put different uh, harmful materials to water. And at one point, water will become like this. What do you think about the state of this water, children? Can any animal live here? Can any aquatic plant grow here children they cannot that is because the condition of water has completely changed it's very bad now this condition is really bad for the survival of organisms so this type of condition is known as pollution of water so what is pollution of water or water pollution adding different substances, different waste materials to water till it becomes unsuitable for consumption. Okay, so can we consume this water? We cannot. So we all know that water is a very limited resource. And even the present amount of water is polluted, what will happen children? We will not have enough water in the future, right? So we will write what water pollution is. What is pollution then? Addition of different substances, harmful materials to water till it becomes unsuitable for consumption. Understand? Right. Adding harmful materials to water, waste material also correct, adding harmful materials to water till it becomes unsuitable for consumption.
is known as is known as water pollution understand adding harmful materials to water till it becomes unsuitable for consumption is known as water pollution okay children so look at this assignment prepare a report about the human activities that cause water pollution i'm sure you must have done these type of activities even when you are in your lower grades okay so it's a simple thing by looking at the environment uh, to make a list like this if you look at the environment you will find so many occasions uh, or so many instances where the water pollution takes place so what are the instances children i will help you with a few examples okay so prepare a report about the human activities human activities that cause water pollution what are the human activities releasing household waste releasing household waste materials to water bodies water bodies what else children you must have seen some factories they also release some harmful substances to water bodies that is also very bad releasing factory waste waste to water next one i will write addition of harmful chemicals like agrochemicals agrochemicals means there are different types of chemicals like herbicides pesticides used in agriculture so some of these substances also added to water okay so addition of addition of agrochemicals addition of agrochemicals to water okay so you can write many more examples under this assignment so we will go see some other examples children some methods of water pollution i'll see we have five methods here addition of agrochemicals and chemicals i already explained you that during agriculture pesticides herbicides like chemicals are used and some farmers they use more than the recommended dose okay so then what happens after rains with rain water this excess agrochemicals they wash and they wash away to the water bodies okay so addition of polythene and plastics this is something most of us do we just throw these polythene and plastic to water bodies and even to the other places so addition of polythene and plastics to water bodies and releasing of chemicals and impure water from factories i already explained this as well okay sometimes uh, extremely hot water is released to the water body so then fish and other animals they die because of high temperature right and releasing of waste materials and impure water to water bodies domestic waste or household waste is added and washing and bathing in water bodies this is also not very good children a lot of shampoo and lot of soap is added to water bodies understand so we will see some pictures related to them okay look at this addition of agrochemicals and chemicals look at how they spray these chemicals to the environment so what happens some farmers after washing these chemicals they wash these empty bottles in water ways so then these harmful substances get added to water so these are very poisonous substances so what happens aquatic animals they die okay so what is the next one addition of polythene and plastics to water bodies look at this environment children how it has changed they must have been very beautiful environments before look what happens here 
So when because of this addition of polythene and plastic, you know that they don't uh, break down in the environment. So they block the drainage systems. Therefore, water cannot flow anymore from one place to another place. Understand? Right, children. Look at this. Releasing of chemicals and impure water from factories. So you can see from these large tubes how this black color water comes. So, so many substances are dissolved in this factory water, right? So many harmful chemicals and sometimes it comes as hot water. So when this water is mixed with fresh water, what will happen children? It will harm the animals and aquatic plants, okay? So look at this one. Releasing of household waste materials to water. Look at these children, there are many houses, they have straight away released these waste materials to water. Now this is a water body, but you can see that water doesn't flow anymore, right? So that is because of the presence of so many substances in this water, the drainage system is also blocked, okay? So this is not a very beautiful scene. So what happens when lot of people release these type of uh, household materials, household waste products uh, to these water bodies, what will happen? It will directly harm the aquatic life. Understand children? Right. Next one, emission of chemicals and washing materials like washing powder, soap, shampoo, those type of substances also, when added in too much, uh, what will happen? It can pollute the environment. Okay, when these substances are added in large amounts, that is not good for the environment. Understand children? So, pollution of surface water affects groundwater too. Now, do you remember what surface water means? What groundwater means? I hope you remember. Surface water means water remains on the soil. What is groundwater? Groundwater means if these are the soil particles, Groundwater means the water that goes through the soil particles. Okay, pollution of surface water affects groundwater too. If surface water is polluted, some of this surface water will go as groundwater. Okay, so when the surface water goes underground, what will happen? They also will get polluted. So then what happens? I told you that in wells and springs, we use groundwater, okay? So we use groundwater in wells and springs. So when this groundwater is polluted, let's say that we use that well water, that water is polluted. What will happen? We will get different types of diseases, okay? As groundwater is used to drink, example in wells, these poisonous chemicals enter the human body, okay? There are harmful chemicals present in the environment. So let's say that uh, in a spring or well, poisonous chemicals present in water. So when we consume this water for a long period of time, here we focus on the long period of time. Okay, children, not during a short period of time. These type of diseases will not arise during a short period of time. But if we take long period of time, if you keep on drinking this type of water, these harmful poisonous substances will get accumulated in your body and you will get different types of diseases. What are these diseases? Like kidney diseases, cancers. Understand? So we will write, this causes many serious illnesses like kidney failure. Kidney failure. Cancers. And sometimes diseases associated with the digestive system. Diseases associated with the digestive system. Right, children. So in this way, we have come to an end of this lesson. So what are the things we learned in this lesson, children? 
we are going to see the things we learn in the summary. So this is the summary of the lesson. Water is an essential factor for the existence of life. We learn that animals and plants, we need water to live, to survive, right? Water exists in three physical states. They are solids, liquids and gases. So solid state of water, example, ice and snow. Liquid state of water, normal water present in rivers, oceans, etc. Gaseous state of water, water vapor, steam are the examples. Okay. The ways in which water exists are precipitation or rain, surface water and ground water. We learn that based on availability, water can be divided into three main groups. That is precipitation, surface water and ground water. The types of water based on salinity are fresh water, marine water and brackish water. We learn that the amount of salts dissolved in water is known as salinity. And based on salinity, there are three types of water called fresh water, marine water and brackish water. Understand? So water is important for human activities. We learn what are the uses of water in our day-to-day -day activities, right? And the amount of consumable water has been limited due to water pollution. Under this we learn only 0.01% of water on earth can be consumed. Even that little bit has decreased because of pollution of water. Okay, so it is our duty and responsibility to minimize water pollution and conserve water. Okay, as mindful children, you all should understand water is a limited resource and water is one of the most important needs in our life and we should conserve water. We should save water without wasting it. Okay, children, so I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Now it's time to put what we learn in practice. We are going to do exercise, right? Okay. Okay, children. So here we have the exercise given in the textbook. We will go through this. Question number one. Select the correct answer. Which one of the followings do not appear in the solid state of water? Do not appear. Do not appear in the solid state of water. Ice. Ice is solid or liquid or gas? Yes, ice is a solid. Ice is solid. Snow is solid. Glaciers, that is also solid. Steam, steam is not solid, steam is gas. Therefore, answer is steam. Number two, water with high salinity is known as. Now, what is salinity? I am sure you understand. You remember this one. Salinity means the amount of salts dissolved in water. So, water with high salinity, where can we find salty water? Yes, in seas and oceans. So, water with high salinity is known as, the water present in seas is known as marine water. So, this is the answer. The other answers are fresh water, brackish water, muddy water. Answer is marine water. Number three, consumable percentage of water on earth is the amount of water that can be consumed. Do you remember this children? Now these facts you have to memorize. Okay. I hope you remember I explained that the amount of water that can be consumed is 0.01%. This is only 10%, only 1%, only 0.1%, only 0.01%. Okay. Water in lagoons is known as brackish water. Do you remember? Where can we find marine water? That is in seas and oceans. Where can we find fresh water with the minimum amount of salt? That is in rivers, lakes, waterfalls, etc. And water in lagoons is known as brackish water. Right? So marine water, fresh water, brackish water is the answer. Okay, question number two, fill in the blanks with a suitable word or words. Water in rivers, streams, 
lakes tanks is known as water in rivers streams lakes or tanks is known as now this is known as fresh water right fresh water fresh water is there another way think carefully water in rivers streams lakes tanks based on availability you all know that there are three different types of water one is precipitation number two surface water what is surface water Surface water means water present on or water remains on surface of soil. Look at these things. Rivers, streams, lakes, tanks, they all present as surface water. Therefore, you can write two answers. Here in this question, it says suitable word or words. Two words we have here. Water in rivers, streams, lakes, tanks, they are coming under fresh water when we consider salinity. But when we consider availability, that is coming under surface water. So fresh water or surface water. Okay. Number two. Brackish water can be seen. in Where can we see brackish water? In the goats. Rain and hail are the examples of those are the ways where earth gets water from clouds. Therefore, they are examples of precipitation. Okay. Many blank are dissolved in sea water. What is dissolved in sea water? Different, different salts are dissolved in sea water. I told you like sodium chloride, magnesium chloride. You remember, right? So many salts are, many salts are dissolved in sea water. So out of these salts, sodium chloride salt is used as normal salt to cook food. Understand? Right, children? So we completed the exercise given in the textbook. Now we are going to do some additional exercises in order to understand this lesson better. Okay. Okay. Additional exercises one. Underline the correct answer. The most abundant substance in blood is. The most abundant substance is blood is. Do you remember I told you that 90% of blood contains water. Right. Therefore, answer water, blood cells, blood cells also present, but that is not the most abundant substance. Glucose and vitamins, they are not abundant. The most abundant substance is water. What in polar regions present as? Now, what are the polar regions? North Pole and South Pole, Arctic and Antarctic regions. So, water in polar regions present as? What? Solid state, right? Because of the very low temperature, water freezes. Therefore, water present as solid state. Here given liquid, gas, solid, clouds. What is the answer, children? Solids. Those are the areas where glaciers present. Okay? So, answer is solid. From the following fruits, the fruit with the highest percentage of water is... Almost all the fruits contain some amount of water in it. Some fruits are there, they are very fleshy. Okay, a lot of water present in it. We will go through tomato, corn, pineapple, radish. It's obvious. If you have seen a tomato, you know how fleshy it is. Right? You can even squeeze and get juice. Juice mainly contains water. Understand? So, tomato is the answer. Corn, radish and pineapple, they have some amount of water, but not as in tomato. Right? Number four. The most abundant type of water present on earth is. 
the most abundant type of water present on earth is. So from the entire amount of water, you all know that 97.41% contained as marine water, right, in seas and oceans. Therefore, the most abundant type of water present on earth is marine water. Fresh water, lagoon water, brackish water, they are not as abundant as marine water. So, answer 1. Number 5. The largest amount of water is present in, the largest amount, in oceans, atmosphere, earth, rivers. So, largest amount of water present as marine water, therefore they present in oceans. Number six, according to media reports, kidney patients are more common in the dry zone. What could be the main reason for this? Do you remember when you're discussing about this water pollution, I told you there are some poisonous substances present in water. When we consume these types of substances and these types of water with these poisonous substances continuously for a long period of time, we get diseases like kidney diseases, cancers. I hope you remember that one. So what could be the reason? We will go through. There are many poisonous chemicals dissolved in water they consume. This is correct, but we will go through the rest as well. The food they consume is unhygienic. There is no relationship between unhygienic food and kidney disease, right? So they work too hard. That is not the answer. And the high temperature of that zone, that is also not the answer. So answer is the first one. There are many poisonous chemicals dissolved in water they consume. Understand? The percentage of water on the earth's surface that present in solid state. Solid state. What is the percentage? 2.58. That is the answer. 0 0.05, 2%, 3.45%, those are not the answers, 2.58%. And the next one, when the area of earth covered with water is taken as a percentage, do you remember? We drew a circle, more than 70%, more than 70% of earth is covered with water. So what is the answer? 70%. Understand? Number 9. Marine water tastes salty because of presence of salt. Okay? The presence of sodium chloride salt. That is the answer. We will go through the rest. It's brackish nature. The presence of magnesium chloride. None of the above. Answer is number one, the presence of sodium chloride salt. Number ten, a chemical used to disinfect water. What is the meaning of disinfect? To kill germs. Now when we consume water, children, you know that there are germs, microorganisms present. Some of these microorganisms are not good for our health, okay? Therefore, we have to destroy this microorganism. So the most common method of destroying these microorganisms at home is by boiling water. But remember, in industrial level, in urban areas, when they supply water in urban areas, boiling is not possible. Therefore, they add some chemicals to destroy the microorganisms. So one chemical they use is chlorine. Okay, a chemical used to disinfect water is calcium carbonate, chlorine is the answer. Sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, those are not the answers. Chlorine is the answer. Okay, okay. The evaporation of water from plants. Now, this is a new incident that we are going to discuss under this exercise. You are going to learn about this uh, particular topic in the other lessons as well, okay? So, listen carefully, children. 
when we take plants, you all know that there are plant leaves, branches. And do you remember I explained you, there are tiny holes present in these plant leaves. What is the name? Yes, that is tomato. Right? So during the daytime, what happens children? Because of the presence of sunlight, suns, because of the presence of sun's heat, this plant body gets heated up. Therefore, the amount of water present inside the plant body, they absorb this heat. And then what happens? They evaporate. Evaporate means this liquid water turns into gaseous water or water vapor. Understand? So then inside the plant water is present and it increases the temperature, it gets heated up. Therefore what happens? From liquid water it changes into water vapor. And now this water vapor goes out through this tomato. They go out and added to the atmosphere. This process of loss of water vapor from plant is known as transpiration. Okay, the evaporation of water from plants is known as transpiration. Vaporization is not the answer. What is photosynthesis? That is production of food. And condensation? Condensation means water vapor turns into liquid water. Okay, so transpiration, that is the process where water loss takes place from the plant in the form of water vapor. Understand? Right. Next one. Water supply to the cities is disinfected by. Now what is disinfection? Killing germs, destroying germs. So you all know that I explained it before. Water is disinfected in cities by adding chlorine. So boiling, boiling is correct, but not water supply to the cities. In domestic level, by boiling water, we can kill germs, right? Adding chlorine is the answer. Providing sunlight, providing air, they are not correct answers. Okay, right. Number 13, not an instance where pollution of water takes place. Not an instance. Not an instance. We will go through. Addition of agrochemicals to rivers, it's definitely an instance where pollution takes place. Addition of animal fecal materials to water, water gets impure because of this fecal matter. Therefore, this is also one method of pollution of water. Releasing impure water from factories, that is also correct. Okay, use of water in agriculture. So when you use water in agriculture, it's not a way of pollution. Therefore, not an instance where pollution of water takes place is use of water in agriculture. Number 14. Herbs can stay rigid because... Now herbs are small plants. They don't have wooden stems. Even though they don't have woody stems, they have tender stems. They can stand straight because of the presence of water in the stems. Okay, so herbs can stay rigid because they get enough fertilizer. That's not the answer. They get enough air. Not the answer. They get enough water. That is the correct answer. Okay, number 15. The percentage of water that can be consumed is... A very little amount of water can be consumed. What is the percentage? I hope you remember. You have to memorize these things. It is 0.01%. 0.01%. Okay. We'll move to the next question. Right. Next exercise. Write T in front of the true statements and F in front of the false statements. Right. The amount of salts dissolved in marine water is less than that of brackish water. Is it true or false? This is false, right? The largest amount of or the highest amount of salts are dissolved in 
marine water. It is not less than that of brackish water. Therefore, the amount of salts dissolved in marine water is less than that of brackish water is false. Therefore, you have to write F. Okay. The percentage of salts present in fresh water is less than that of brackish water. That is correct. The highest amount of salts are dissolved in marine water and the lowest amount of salts are dissolved in fresh water. Therefore, this is right. True. The water in rivers, streams, ponds is known as fresh water. That is right. Therefore, we have to write true. Sleet and mist are types of precipitation. Is this correct, children? Now, sleet is, yes, sleet is a type of precipitation. What are the other types of precipitation? Rain, snow, hail, they are coming under precipitation. But mist is not a type of precipitation. Okay, therefore, even though sleet is correct, because mist is not a type of precipitation, this answer is, or this statement is not correct. It is false. Energy stored in water can be used to generate electricity. Correct. To produce hydropower, we use water. That is true. You understood this, right? We'll move to the next one. Next exercise. Again, write T in front of the true statements and F in front of the false statements. Water covers 45% of the earth's surface. It is false. Water covers more than 70%. Therefore, this is false. The percentage of water that can be consumed is 0.01%. Now, this is a true statement, right? Water that can be consumed is only a very little amount as 0.01%. This is true. 2.8 of water on the earth's surface is present in solid state. What is the amount? 2.8 correct children? No, it should be 2.58%. Therefore, this is false. Next one. Water is a limited resource. Yes, water is a limited resource. Why is it a limited resource? Number one. Only 0.01% of water can be consumed. Another reason is even though this little amount, some amount of this water is already polluted. Okay, so water is a limited resource. That is true. Okay, moving to the next one. Additional exercises for fill in the blanks. Now look at these equations children. Here blank, heating, water. What is turned into water by heating? That is ice. When you heat ice, it turns into water. When you heat water, what will happen? When you heat water, it will turn into steam or water vapor. Or gaseous water. Right? So, if you want to convert steam into water, it means this steam into water. If you want to convert steam into water, what do you have to do? If you want to convert water into steam, you have to heat water. If you want to convert steam into water, you have to cool this steam, right? So, steam can be converted to water. Steam can be turned into water by cooling. So, here you are going to write cooling. So water, when you cool water, what will happen? It will turn into ice. Okay. Next one. Question number one. What are the types of water based on availability? What are the three types, children? There are three different types of water based on availability. Yes, that is precipitation, surface water and ground water. So, precipitation. 
precipitation, surface water and the last one, ground water. Ground water. Understand, right? Explain what precipitation is. What is precipitation? Water falling onto earth. Water that falls onto earth is known as precipitation. Water that falls on earth. Right? What are the types of precipitation? I explained four different types. Rain, hail, sleet and snow. We will write. What are the types? Rain, snow, different types are there. Sleet, hail. We discussed about these things. Understand? Right. Right. Next one. Question number one. What is the taste of marine water? What is the taste? Salty taste. What is the reason for that? Now, what is the reason, children? That is because a chemical called sodium chloride is present. Okay. What is the taste of marine water? Salty taste. What is the reason? The presence of presence of sodium chloride. Right? Number two. What is the common name of sodium chloride? What is that? Salt. Day-to-day -day life we use sodium chloride and it is known as salt. Right. Number three. Write a simple experiment to show that salts are dissolved in marine water. Simple experiment. You don't have to write all those steps we discussed about an experiment. Right. Write a simple experiment to show that salts are dissolved in marine water. Do you remember I explained how salt is produced in saltans? The same theory we can use here in order to prove that salts are dissolved in water. So what can we do here children? What can we do here? You can take little amount of marine water to a dish. Okay, to a dish, you can take some marine water. I'm going to label it. This is the dish and this is the marine water. Water. Then what you have to do is, you have to leave it outside under sun, right? Under the sun. So you will realize when you leave it under the sun, because of the heat of the sun, the water present in this dish will evaporate and finally the salt will remain in the bottom of the dish. Okay, thereby you can prove that salt is present in marine water. Okay, so we will simply write what to do. Water is evaporated by sun's heat. Sun's heat. So what is the observation? You can briefly write observation. Salt remains in the dish. You will see it as a white powder. Okay. 
there's another way to do this you can take a little bit of marine water and you can heat it thoroughly so you will see the water evaporates when you heat it the water evaporates and finally white color powder will remain at the bottom of the dish okay that is also salt right so you can write one of these methods okay the next question what are the types of water based on salinity now what is salinity salinity is the amount of salts dissolved in water so based on salinity or based on the amounts of salts dissolved in water there are three types of water what are they yes fresh water marine water and brackish water so what are the types of water based on salinity number one fresh water number two brackish water and the last one marine water all right in which type of above mentioned water the highest percentage of salts the highest percentage of salts are dissolved which type of water is salt in taste that is marine water right in oceans and seas the water present with a lot of salts dissolved in it understand therefore highest percentage of salt present in marine water right in which type of water the lowest percentage of salts are dissolved it's obvious it is fresh water so the amount of salts dissolved in these uh, brackish water it is less than that of marine water but higher than fresh water understand right okay the next question what can you tell about the salinity of brackish water i even explain it here when it comes to brackish water the salinity of brackish water is higher than that of fresh water but lower than that of marine water right so we will write what can you tell about the salinity of brackish water salinity is higher than that of fresh water and lower than that of marine water all right name a habitat with brackish water what is the meaning of habitat a place right name a habitat with brackish water the goons next one how is the salt we eat produced salt is produced in saltans what is happened there sea water is collected and vaporized using the solar heat okay we will write it briefly how is the salt we eat produced by vaporizing by vaporizing sea water by solar heat by vaporizing sea water by solar heat you understood this right okay okay additional exercises 9 read this carefully a dry glass was taken half of it was filled with water and observed there was no change in the outer surface of the glass then some ice cubes were added into that glass with water and observed again water droplets were seen on the outer surface of the glass 
Do you remember we did the same experiment, children? I hope so. First of all, we will label this. This is the glass and water, ice and water droplets outside. So you remember we did the same experiment. What happens to the temperature of the water when ice is added to the water? Earlier it was under normal temperature but when you add ice what happens to the temperature of water? Temperature reduces. We will write that. What happens to the temperature of the water when ice is added to the water? The temperature of water Reduces temperature of water reduces. Right? Putting ice lowers the temperature of the air around the glass. Okay, then what happens to the water vapor in the air around the glass? So initially, even though we can't see there's air around the glass. So then what happens? Because the glass is cold, air around the glass also becomes cool. So then what happens? Because of the reduction or decrease of temperature, what happens? This water vapor condenses and water droplets are formed. Okay, so then what happens to the water vapor in the air around the glass? Water vapor condenses. Water vapor condenses. What do you conclude by doing this activity? Do you remember what the conclusion was? I hope you remember we did this experiment to prove that there is water vapor present in the atmosphere. So what do you conclude by doing this activity? We can conclude that there is water vapor in the atmosphere. We can conclude that there is water vapor in the atmosphere. Right? Okay. Next exercise. Water is the basis of life. Conserving water is everyone's duty and responsibility. That is because life without water is unimaginable. So we have some questions to answer here. Write three types of water based on availability. Now you all know the answer. Based on availability, what are the three types of water? Yes, precipitation, surface water and ground water. We will write. Write three types of water based on availability. Precipitation, surface water, and ground water. Understand? Next one. What are the three types of water based on the amounts of salts dissolved in it? What is this? Based on the amounts of salts dissolved means based on salinity. So what are the three types of water based on salinity children? Yes, that is number one, marine water. The highest percentage of salts. Then brackish water. And finally, fresh water with the lowest percentage of salt. It's very easy, isn't it, children? Right. Okay, children. Define the following terms. Define the following terms. We have three terms, dehydration, clouds and glaciers. So what is the meaning of dehydration? Now you know that 
during very extremely hot conditions, uh, extreme hot weather, uh, loss of water takes place from our bodies. So we get dehydrated. Even plant bodies get dehydrated. Okay. So dehydration means loss of a large amount of water from the body. It is known as dehydration. Now this dehydration is not very good. People might even die because of dehydration. Okay, children. So we will write down that one. Right. So what is dehydration? Loss of a large amount of water from water from the body. Okay. Next one clouds. What is the meaning of a cloud? How the clouds are formed, children? Clouds are formed by condensation of water vapor present in the atmosphere. So we can consider that clouds are masses formed by condensation of water vapor, right? We will write that. Cloud. Clouds. Masses formed by condensation of water vapor. Okay, the next one, glaciers. What are glaciers, children? Glaciers are huge ice mountains present in polar regions, right? So we can consider glaciers are a type of or a solid form of water present in polar regions. We will write that. Glaciers, a form of solid water present in polar regions. North Pole and South Pole. Understand? Dehydration, loss of a large amount of water from the body and clouds are masses formed by condensation of water vapor and glaciers are a form of solid water present in polar regions. Okay, next one. Take out a bottle of soft drink that was in the fridge and observe after a little while. What will happen? What is the observation? You know that after a little while taking out this bottle from the fridge, what can you see? Water droplets will fall on the outer surface of the bottle. Right? So we will write water droplets fall on the outer surface of the bottle. Observation is water droplets form on the outer surface of the bottle. So reason for that observation we already discussed this one. What is the reason? When this bottle present like this. Now, what can you tell about the temperature of this bottle? Temperature is less than that of the atmospheric temperature. It means it has a cool surface. So then what happens? Water vapor around this bottle condenses. Right? They also become cold. So water vapor around the bottle condensers and water droplets are formed. Okay, so reason for that observation, condensation of, condensation of water vapor present around the, 
present around the borders. So because of the condensation of water vapor present around the bottle, these water droplets are formed. Okay, right. The next one, we have three questions again. Here we have a diagram. We did this experiment. I hope you remember. Name A, B and C parts of the apparatus shown in the diagram. So what is A? A is the test tube holder. What is B children? What is B? B is a test tube or even you can use boiling tube because you heat it. Okay. And what is this C? C is the Bunsen burner. What is this then? This is ice. So we can name A, B and C. A, test tube holder. What is B children? Test tube or even boiling tube can be taken. Test tube or boiling tube. And C is Bunsen burner. Okay, the next one. During the activity, what happens to the ice cubes in B? What happens? Because of the heat, ice cubes melt and they turn into liquid water. Ice turns into liquid water. Okay. If you further heat this liquid water, what will happen? That water will boil and it will turn into steam or water vapor. Understand? So, write another method by which water vapor can be added to the atmosphere other than the method shown here. Now, I already explained you. Now, when ice turns into water, if you heat this amount of water further, what will happen? It will boil and it will turn into steam. Now this steam means water vapor or gaseous water. So that is one method of adding water vapor to the atmosphere. What are the other methods children? Just uh, think what are the other methods? Yes, so because of the evaporation of water from the water bodies, right from the surfaces of these large water bodies, water is or water vapor is added to the atmosphere. We will write evaporation of water we can write from lakes okay so what about our exhale there exhale there also contains water vapor some amount of water vapor that also can be write as an answer okay so i hope you understood this part Right children, look at this picture, there are two solutions, solution A and solution B, okay, it has water, we can write, these are water samples, this is also water, okay. A test to identify a marine water sample and a fresh water sample is shown here. Okay, so solar heat is coming from there. Right, how to identify marine water and fresh water from solution A and B? How to identify marine and fresh water from solution A and B? You leave it under solar heat. So then what will happen? Water will evaporate from these two vessels. Okay. So we will assume that solution A contains marine water and solution B contains fresh water. Only in solution A, only in this vessel, after evaporation of water, salt will remain at the bottom. 
Will you be able to see salt at the bottom of the other sample? No. Right? So only one solution or only one vessel will contain salt after evaporation of the entire amount of water. So that particular vessel contains marine water. Understand? We will write that. How to identify marine water and fresh water from solutions A and B after evaporation of water after evaporation of water due to solar heat only one container will have salt at the water. That is the marine water sample. That is the marine water sample. Name an industry in our country that uses a process similar to this. It's very clear that is salt industry. Right, move to the next. Write the chemical name of the product related to that industry. Salt industry, what is the product? That is salt. What is the chemical name of salt? It's very clear. I hope you remember this. That is sodium chloride. Okay. Even though there is a lot of water on the earth's surface, why can't they be consumed? Now you all know that 70% of earth's surface is covered with water more than 70 percent right but only 0.01 percent can be consumed from this entire amount why what is the reason children from the 70 percent mainly water present as marine water or in water in oceans and seas right what about the other amount 2.58 percent is present as solid water so can we use marine water, solid water for our day-to-day -day activities? We cannot, right? Even though there is a lot of water on the Earth's surface, why can't they be consumed? Because most of, most of them present, either as marine water or as solid water. Marine water or solid water. This is the answer, right? Because most of them present either as marine water or as solid water. So, we can't consume them. Okay, children. Now, we have completed this lesson. So, we learned how important water is and we learned that water is one basic needs of humans and we learned that water is a limited resource. Okay. And we completed our exercise and we did some additional exercises as well. So, I hope you understand the lesson very clear now. Okay. So you can practice these uh, exercises, you can do these exercises again and again so that you can practice all the things that you have learned so far.